Gravity Collider Physics. This is a scalable, real-time physics setup that's great for stuff like long hair, scarves, etc. Stuff like that. First of all, it's important to mention that this is a building upon these tutorials that I'll link in the description and re-explain here. These are the pros and cons of the setup, but I won't go re-explaining -re everything on screen. Let's just get to it. I'm going to start by putting Miss Marvel here in rest mode because her animation doesn't really match up with her being in edit mode. It makes it easier. So, you go into pose mode or edit mode as long as you get the pivot point to line up with the bone joints. The two items I recommend you put in the quick favorites menu are cursed to selected and move selected to cursor because you're going to be using them a lot. Now, if the cursor is where I want it, we're going to spawn a single vert on it, in which you can add this to your mesh menu by turning on the add-on the preferences. Now let's add that single vertex. I have it where E is to extrude from the vertex point. I'm going to follow somewhat near the bone joints, since we're going to match them up. Make sure your editing is set to point to the bottom left of the viewer, or you'll extrude thin air. Okay, with Miss Marvel hidden, and let's start selecting bones. This goes way quicker with the modes in the quick menu too. Like the workflow is to move the cursor to the selected joint, then move the matching wire joint to the cursor. This allows pretty much perfect positioning of the uh, joints to the bones so that, so that the vertices that the bones follow are right at the tips of the bones. I mean, this part's pretty damn easy, it's just, you know, time consuming. A lot of different mode switching and stuff. Alright, let's hide this armature. With that done, I'm gonna assign vertex groups along the joints so that the IK bones later on can follow them. You can do this at any time though, I just kinda prefer doing it here. Now we get to the collider part. Select the edge edit mode and then click the line. We're going to move the cursor to the center of the point. Now we're going to add a cube and vertically scale it to be almost to the points. It could be any shape you want it to act as your collision really. But uh, I'm going to rotate it as close to the line being near the center as I can. Doesn't need to be perfect, it's fine. And then click face edit mode and click the top and bottom face and then subdivide. It's important to merge the top and bottom vertices of the box to the wire, so that it doesn't fall through. Hell, you don't even have to merge at the ends. As long as the box is attached to the wire in some way, you're good. It won't fall through the wire. In which I also recommend putting vertex merging options in your quick favorites. Here I'm going to repeat the process for each part. Speedrun! Finish with that, let's test some physics to make sure it works. We're going to go to cloth physics and set the zero point as the pin group so it stays up while we hit play. Ah, my workspace is huge for Unreal Engine so I'm going to adjust the speed multiplier. Now you see this, this took a while to figure out, 
why it wasn't working, but it turns out I needed to set the bending model to linear because it's not a traditional cloth shape. Another important thing is turning on dynamic mesh so it can scale in real time. So now the test is working. Woo! But these boxes will collapse easily and the physics don't keep the original form. What I figured is creating another vertex group. It's kind of like a shell. Then we're going to go into weight paint mode and make sure the brush tool is set to add full weight, yada, yada, yada. So the trick is hold alt and then left click drag from the top point towards the bottom. This creates a nice gradient to work from to keep the shape in its original form. But no matter what, top point has to be 100% red so the whole thing doesn't fall. Going back to the pin group, we're going to set it to the shell. As you can see now, the physics will keep the shape a bit better and controlling the weight on the boxes helps control the form you want to keep in case you have like twisty hair or something like that. Now you see me messing with the bending and the stiffness and dampening. I don't actually know what I'm doing, but I just know that thing keeps the boxes form a little bit better. Now let's get Miss Marvel back and apply this to her scarf. What I'm doing in the outliner doesn't amount to anything because we're going to be parenting the boxes to her bone in a bit. Anyways, on to post mode. Click the beginning of the bone chain and add an IK modifier. I'm going to sample the wire using the outliner because I'm lazy and then set the vertex group to 1. Then the chain to 1 so it only affects the one bone. Then we're going to continue with the same process down the line for the other bones. Now you're probably thinking, hey, if it's an IK chain, why don't I just go to the very end and then set that bone up with a box and then just have all the other ones be set up on the IK chain. And I would say, well, I haven't tried that yet, but give it a shot. And once I test, I'm going to forget that I'm in rest mode. And then I'm going to forget that I didn't parent the box mesh to Miss Marvel. Which involves making sure the armature is in rest mode, and then shift clicking the box to the bone I want to parent it to, and then control P to the bone, and then the boxes will correctly follow the model. So now it's working with the model. And then I was like, wait, there's barely any movement. Where's the flappiness I had at the beginning? Then I tested the right cape to double check, and it turns out I forgot to bring back the box I used for collision. Now, collision. I'm sure you're thinking, why is the collision on the small boxes acting up? Well, that's because I haven't adjusted it yet. I can't tell you perfect numbers because I've never had to deal with working physics before and had to hand animate long hair with IK until now. Here's the numbers I do have for the right scarf that I punched in with some hopeful shit and had to remember that I'm working in an Unreal Engine sized workspace which is 100 times bigger than Blender's. So my numbers are going to be pretty damn high. What's cool is that I get to finally play with the field system physics that are in Blender like force fields and pushes and stuff like that. Although this setup is really light so you gotta be careful with the numbers. Well I bid you all good luck, uh, Miss Marvel rocks, and play Gravity Rush. Mm -hmm.